Wouldn't it be nice if you could press one button and AI would do competitor and keyword research for you, prepare a content plan, brief articles, write the articles, edit the articles, post them on your site, and then does relevant outreach and re-optimizes them live depending on what changes on Google and your competitor's pages? Well, unfortunately, we're not there yet. But there are still tons of tools that can massively help you speed up your workflow. These tools will help you be more productive and output more content and links for less time and money. And I think that's really something that needs to be talked about because 99% of SEOs need less tactics and better execution. Yes, you can collect a gazillion link building or on-page tactics if you want, but if I look at your business right now, I can bet that you just need more content and more links more consistently. Nothing new, just more of it with better execution. And that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on in this video. This is often the advice I give to SEOs I help in private. I kind of feel like their mom force feeding them broccoli because it's good for them while they're crying for chicken nuggets. But stop crying, lots of nuggets are coming in this video and most of the tools I'm going to be sharing have a free version. So even if you've strapped for cash, you'll get lots of value here. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Gail Breton and I'm one of the co-founders of Authority Hacker. And together with my co-founder Mark, we've helped over 13,000 students start and grow their blogs. Many of these students have made this their full-time gig at this point, and you'll find a bunch of case studies on authorityhacker.com if you want to learn more. But for now, let's start with tool number one. For many of us, content creation starts in Google Doc because it's a great tool to collaborate with other content creators and scale an editorial team. You can highlight some text, comment on it, the writer can reply, you get back to them with a reference link, and when you're done, you click on the tick box and the convo goes away. It works really well for a free solution. The problem is, a lot of SEO today is not creating new content, it's updating content. And if you want to use Google Doc for that, you need to copy the content from WordPress to Google Docs, fix the formatting because it's going to be messed up, re-add the images that did not copy over, do the actual editing work on Google Docs, Recopy and paste the content on WordPress, refix the formatting because it's messed up coming from Google Docs, and finally click the update button. All of that just so you can collaborate with your editorial team. Well, Multicolab brings all the collaboration features of Google Docs directly inside WordPress for free. So you don't have to do all the steps I just mentioned just to edit your content. You just open the blog post you want to update, highlight some text or images you want to update with some comments for your authors, they come in, they edit directly inside WordPress, and you click the update button when you're done. This is a serious time saver for serial content updaters. And implementing a workflow like that directly inside WordPress is likely to boost your rankings faster than creating lots of new content on your site. And it's also a lot cheaper. There's only one cave hit with this plugin, it will slow down your text editor a little bit. Don't worry, it's not going to slow down your front end and you're still gonna have perfect core web vitals if you have them, but when you edit text, it might be a bit more jittery. But I still think it's well worth it. You can just activate it when you are on a serial content update spree and deactivate it when you're done. Now, the next problem you're gonna have is what do you update your content with? And that's what tool number two is all about. This is a bit of an AI master tool combo and it's going to help you find original facts to add to your updated on your content. You see, the problem with Google right now is they've given too much power to search intent. So if you Google a keyword like how to get rid of double chin, you'll find 10 times the same article on page one. But I think they started to understand and address the issue because from our experiments, the best path forward to rank high on Google is not only to match your competitor's content, but to add something new to the topic so that you have a bit of original thoughts on your page. The problem is if you can't use Google to find that original information, where do you find it? Okay. Okay, uh, think, 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 think. Well, one of my favorite places to hunt for this kind of information is YouTube videos and podcasts. They tend to be a lot more authentic than most SEO pieces, which according to SEO Master by Day and Dance Floor Paramaniac by Night, Lily Ray, is something that is really important with the recent core update. Google is pushing content that displays experience more and you'll need more of that into your pages if you want to rank better. The problem is that searching inside YouTube videos or podcasts is a bit of a nightmare, but it's also a boon because 99% of SEOs are not going to use it to find information. And that's where the two tools I'm about to talk about are coming in. Mac Whisper and Claude 2. They're like the Batman and Robin of content creation for me these days. Mac Whisper is a transcription tool that allows you to put any YouTube video URL or podcast and get a perfect transcript of it using the Whisper model by OpenAI running on your computer, which means there's no API costs. Claude 2 on the other on the other hand is a chatbot by Entropic that is not only very good, but has one feature that sets it apart from ChatGPT. You see the free version of ChatGPT has 4,000 tokens, 
the paid version has 8,000 tokens. Claude has 100,000 tokens. And these tokens are basically the memory of the AI, which means that ChatGPT doesn't remember very much before it forgets what you said at the beginning, so it's very hard for it to work on pieces of content. Claude, on the other hand, with 100,000 tokens, can easily walk through a one-hour video or podcast transcript and still give you useful information. So once I get a transcript from a video or podcast from Mac Whisper, I throw it in Claude and I ask it to extract the info, facts, and strategies to give me a high-level overview, and then I can zoom into the parts that I'm most interested in. For example, let's go back to our double chain article. We can take this YouTube video and put it in Mac Whisper, get it transcribed and upload it to Cloud2. I can ask it to extract the tactics to reduce your double chain shared inside the video along with the pros and cons of each and voila, I have a list of tactics that I can add to my article. Many of them are not found on the subs today. That's a really easy way to make your content stand out and Google to give you a little bit more respect for the content you're putting out. That's also the process I've used recently for the Authority Hacker podcast to analyze large amounts of data from our guests like Brian Dean or Corey and ask them relevant questions that would challenge them. This duo of tool is a real killer for serious content creators, don't sleep on it. The next tool I wanna share is is Spamzilla, a search engine for expired and dropped domains. Think about all the effort you sometimes put into generating a single link back to your website. It's crazy. And comparatively, expired and dropped domains are very cheap. They sometimes have hundreds of relevant great links that can help whether you're starting a new site on them or use them to redirect them to boost your authority. I'm not gonna go over the whole process because we have a full video on that on our YouTube channel. You can check it out here if you want to get more information. But one of the main challenges of this process is to find the right expired domain and that's where Spamzilla comes in. It scours many dropped and expired domains marketplaces like the GoDaddy auctions or Namejet and it gathers all the SEO metrics of the domains that are up for grabs like the niche, the linking root domains, the domain rating or snapshots from archive.org if you wanna check these out. And what's really good is that you can filter against any of these metrics to find the perfect domain in just minutes. For example, when I prepared this video, I found a domain how to tune a guitar.org. It was an auction on GoDaddy, it's a DR40 domain with links from Wikipedia, WikiHow, thetimes.co.uk, and a bunch of guitar related sites like guitarworld.com which is a DR77 site. This domain would be an awesome domain to start a guitar affiliate site that monetize with affiliate offers and ads. And when the auction ended, it sold for just a few hundred dollars, way less than the value of the links that were pointing to it. And that's just one domain. There's hundreds of these to grab every single week. There's a free version of Spanzilla with limited data if you want to try it out. Otherwise, it's only $37 a month, which I think is very affordable given the value of these domains. For the next tool, we're going back to creating content on WordPress with Wordable.io, which is a tool that takes all your Google Docs content and puts it onto WordPress without turning it to shit. Especially if you use lots of images like we do. And many of you will be like shaking their heads thinking it's not that difficult to copy and paste, but for those of you who have tried, you know what happens, right? As you paste your content, a lot of the formatting goes to shit, your images are hot linked back to your Google Doc, which means they often don't work on your front end and are not inside your media library. And overall, it's a huge headache to clean up everything once you've pasted into WordPress. So what Wordable does is you connect it to your Google Drive account and to your WordPress site through their plugin, then you select a Google Doc and the site you want to push it to, and it's going to cleanly transform the H2s from Google Doc to the H2s from WordPress. It's going to take the images, optimize them, resize them, compress them automatically, then upload them inside your media library in a clean way, put them at the right place inside your article. And you can even use AI to generate file names and alt text that are relevant so your writers don't have to do it, which is really nice. And just like that, in a few minutes, you have a draft on your WordPress site that looks exactly what the Google Doc looked like, and that makes uploading content a breeze. It's a real time saver as the job of uploading content is often neglected. Wordable at least makes sure that your pages are not broken and built properly on your site, but I want to show a quote I often share with the team here at Atari Hacker. And that quote is, build web pages, not Google Docs. That means that Wordable will do a good job at getting the first draft up on your page, but if you don't put any kind of effort to spice up your pages with things like pro tick boxes, cool images, custom illustrations, tables, bullets, CTAs, and more, you may rank on Google, but you might not necessarily convert your customers because your pages are very dull. So my advice is to use a tool like Wordable to save a bunch of time on the initial upload, but then use that time to develop your design further and build element templates with free tools like Generate Blocks, for example. You'll do a lot better with your site if you do that. Oh yeah, the first five uploads with Wordable are completely free, but if you want things like the AI option, you'll need to take the paid plan that starts at $50 per month, which honestly is probably cheaper than your underpaid VA anyway. If you want to become like one of those snob SEOs that gets to say, according to my test, blah, 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 blah. Well, everyone eats up whatever they say next and pay attention to the next tool. Because short of naming a new SEO tactic that is your best bet to climb the SEO social ladder. Oh yeah, and you might get to rank some websites as a site 
side benefit. The tool I'm talking about is seotesting.com. Do I really need to say what it does? Now, the thing with tools in this category is they tend to be very expensive and enterprise level, which is why small bloggers tend to not look at them. But SEO testing is fairly affordable at $40 per month. It allows you to run tests on a single page using GSC data. So it runs a test for two weeks, then it changes the page for two weeks, and then it tells you which one got the most traffic. But more interestingly, it allows you to run tests of cohorts of pages against each other, which is where the money is if you're running SEO using templates like we do. Should you add a key takeaways box on top of the article? Or maybe an FAQ section? Or should you cut the length of your intros in half because nobody's reading them and it gets people to go back to Google, which is a really bad signal? Well, using SEO testing, you can now use science to test these assumptions and test a group of URLs where you change nothing against a group of URLs where you do these changes and see which ones are doing better during the same period of time. Now, SEO testing is far from perfect. That's due to all the stuff that can happen during your testing period, like a surprise core update, link acquisition, or changes on your competitors' pages, which causes them to jump up, which causes you to jump down, but it's not related to your testing. But testing batches of pages for similar changes and finding what consistently moves the needle is not only what will allow you to concur rankings, it will allow you to keep your rankings. And that's because you'll constantly be refreshing your pages as you figure out what works using these tests. I think using this tool, anyone organized and perseverant enough can take many established sites with enough perseverance. Now, wouldn't it be nice if on top of getting more traffic from your SEO testing, you also got more conversions. Talk about rhetorical questions. Do I really have to ask these questions to keep people watching? Well, anyway, that's what Lasso is offering with a suite of cool tools for affiliate marketers that allow you to make more money with your existing traffic. On top of offering cool looking affiliate widgets like comparison tables, product features that look good and are pretty well optimized on all devices, they also offer to track your affiliate links and revenue, which is really nice because for most affiliate marketers, tracking is a mess. Most of the time when I try to help someone privately, they may know what are their top five pages in terms of revenue, but that's about it. And that's often what's preventing them from growing. More traffic doesn't always mean more revenue. And if you don't know where the money comes from exactly, how can you pick the right keywords or pick the right update schedule? It's probably costing you a lot of money. So once you've connected your affiliate accounts to it, Lasso becomes that one dashboard that shows you the exact revenue you've made from what pages and what affiliate programs. So like a maniac, you can log in every day, check how much money you've made today and decide whether you're getting McDonald's or lobster for dinner tonight. They also monitor your affiliate links to see if the products you're promoting are out of stock and notify you if that's the case. So you don't become that guy that walks his ass off to rank number one, takes a break and makes absolutely no money because you're sending all your traffic to an out of stock page. Finally, Lasso is also an affiliate link manager, which is really nice when the affiliate program you're promoting decides to move from say CJ to Impact. You can update your affiliate link in a single place and all the links on your site are automatically updated, which is really nice and allows you to spend your evening slaughtering kids on Overwatch rather than updating your pages one by one. Overall, I think it's a really handy tool for affiliate marketers that struggle with tracking and can be bothered or don't have the technical skills to build data studio or analytics dashboards. Now onto the next tool. There are very few tools I'm subscribed to since 2016 without interruption, but Grammarly Premium is one of them. And I see you all yawning in the back. And even if you knew about that tool, I'm not sure you're using it properly. And that's what I'm going to show you now. Now, most of you probably already know that Grammarly is an excellent tool to fix your silly spelling mistakes, but also your writing style and improve the clarity and readability of your content. It's a tool everyone should use if you want to improve your time on page. The writing settings I recommend inside Grammarly are domain casual, intent, inform, and convince, audience general, and formality informal. It sets the tool to the easiest level to read, which tends to perform better on Google. Now, like every single tool on the market, Grammarly just added AI, but at least theirs is a little bit useful. If you select any bit of text in any text editor using Grammarly desktop, you can ask AI to, for example, make it more concise or make it easier to understand. Then AI will just do it and you can replace the selected text in just one click. It's pretty much ChatGPT, but inside any text editor, including Google Docs. And once you get the groove of it, editing a piece from a writer using it becomes significantly more efficient. You can fix the style with the recommendations in the sidebar. If you want more research, you can drop a comment on the Google Doc asking the human writer to do the research. And if you want the section to be rewritten, just select it and ask Grammarly to rewrite it on the spot. These are the kind of small efficiencies that AI is really helpful for these days. Plus the premium version of Grammarly has a function that very few people know about. And that's the plagiarism checker. You'll find it at the bottom right of the web app of Grammarly, and it can be very handy to check if your writers are not bamboozling you by copy pasting your competitor's content, but also to make sure AI didn't just steal content when it gave you a rewrite. And trust me, it happens more often than you think. Overall, it's a solid tool for serious content creators, and at just over $100 per month, 
I think it's a steal, especially if you're not a native speaker. All right, so these are my top seven tools for SEO and content creation for 2023. I'd love to hear you, so let me know in the comments and I might feature them in a future video if I have enough of them. If you enjoy this kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe, drop us a like, click on the bell. It really helps us and make sure you don't miss the next videos. I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoy this video, you'll probably enjoy this video where I show you how I use AI and automation tool to automate a lot of my work. I'll even show you how AI landed me an interview on one of the biggest podcasts in the industry.